will move on now to Mr. Pires. Your Excellency, your country, Sri Lanka, has made substantial strides in education. It, is currently, it currently has a higher literacy rate at 92.6%, exceptional enrollment rates in primary at 98%, and in secondary education at 98.62%. This is a direct result of the progressive policies and infrastructure development in Sri Lanka, particularly in the areas of compulsory primary education, teacher recruitment, and teacher education institutions. During the Transforming Education uh, Summit last year, Sri Lanka committed to uh, going even further in its efforts to achieve SDG 4. Specifically, your country pledged to place greater emphasis on teaching STEM in a holistic and integrated manner. This approach aims to impact crucial skills, which I like to call transferable skills, such as critical thinking, creativity, problem solving, emotional intelligence, empathy, and knowledge of peace within school curricula while also focusing on equipping students with relevant work-related skills through TVET programs. Sri Lanka further recognizes the need to forge synergies between social development and economic growth. My question to you, sir. Could you please provide insights into how your country is currently progressing towards these goals and what short-term plans have been devised to achieve them? Thank you. Uh, Madam Moderator, thank you for giving me the floor. <clears throat> Sri Lanka believes that to ensure continuing prosperity in the global economy, nothing is more important than the development and application of knowledge and skills. We also firmly believe that the more we give importance to skills development, the more competent will be our youth. Now, Sri Lanka's education structure is divided into five parts. Primary, junior secondary, senior secondary, collegiate, and tertiary. Primary education lasts five years from grade one to five. And at the end of this period, the students may elect to write a national exam called a scholarship exam. As you have referred quite correctly, we have been diligently working towards placing great emphasis on teaching STEM in a holistic and integrated manner. We believe that this approach will equip our students with essential skills, such as critical thinking, creativity, problem solving, emotional intelligence, empathy, and in our quest to knowledge, uh, of, for peace. We believe that instead of just teaching the students science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, we should allow them to use that knowledge for day-to-day -day living or resolving everyday problems. Now, that's easier said than done, I do concede. You will, however, appreciate that science, technology, engineering, and mathematics is a method of hands-on teaching and learning where students learn to apply academic content by creatively solving real-world problems with innovative design-based thinking to prepare students for future career opportunities. We do realize with that we need to produce people for the fourth industrial revolution and to make them ready for the 21st century. We have to add the three L's, namely learning skills, literally skills, life skills, and so on and so forth. The STEM model has been introduced by the education ministry through a transformational process of education with, uh, with combinations of theoretical knowledge acquired in the classroom, which will then be practically followed. Now, the reforms that have come into effect this year endeavors to instill the thirst, I say, to learn and improve the skill of research-based learning and the ability to work in groups. The module-based learning are to be first implemented uh, for students of grades 1, 6, and 10. My dear friends, towards this endeavor, we believe that ensuring sector-wide professionalization of teaching and the improvement and capacity building of teachers, well-being would play a very key role. We strongly believe that motivated, empowered, and effective teachers are the key to recovering and transforming education and its system and quality of learning for better learning outcomes. Currently, we are mapping out our existing talents uh, and areas need to invest in reskilling along with the digital transformations in education for acquiring fast emerging changes to the core skills required for employment in the 21st century. We are mindful of the fact, however, 
that's an interdisciplinary approach that integrates the arts and sciences may be a, will, a way forward. We believe that we should create a, due, a truly interdisciplinary setting for the sciences to engage with the arts and the arts to engage with the sciences on equal terms. We intend providing the right skills to our faculty to achieve this balance. In line with the above and to further advance our goals and to achieve SDG 4 meaningfully, we are also fostering an interdisciplinary approach that encourages students to explore connections between subjects and apply their learning to real world context. Uh, moreover, Sri Lanka has also actively, uh, we are actively promoting technical and vocational education. Now as a short term plan, we are developing comprehensive teacher training programs to educators to, edu to build capacity in delivering STEM education effectively. We're also partnering with industry and organizations uh, to provide students with hands-on experience and mentorship op opportunities. In this context, Sri Lanka believes that forging synergies between social development and economic growth is highly important. Our educational initiatives are designed to equip students not only with academic knowledge, but also with the skills and values that are needed for a sustainable and pro prosperous society. Finally, I might mention in conclusion that COVID-19 made Sri Lanka to exclusively teach all courses using online platforms for the first time in our history of education. Now, this approach was a new facet of the education system for Sri Lanka as universities were practicing the conventional face-to-face -face classes before the pandemic. Now, this pandemic uh, obviously left us with some takeaways, which I intend to leave you with. First of all, surely we did learn the fact that digital literacy was a requirement for the 21st century. It was a sine qua non, certainly. Due to COVID-19, most students' digital literacy was improved, which is an advantage of the transition of the education system. Secondly, income, as somebody mentioned, is a major socioeconomic factor that will affect the education of the students, especially online education. Therefore, uh, the providing incentives to purchase digital devices and uh, internet connections will surely improve the resource access of students with low incomes. Thirdly, development of the blended education system after proper curriculum investigation to face future COVID-like pandemics uh, and simultaneously keep the digital literacy improving further. Fourthly, training programs for lecturers is perhaps indispensable, instructors and students to teach and learn via online platforms, making parents aware of the online education and the importance of their support towards student academic success. Finally, as uh, the moderator was pleased to observe, the mental health of students Mental health was negatively affected uh, due to the COVID-19. We all know that. Considering the prevailing situation, awareness programs for students about online resources to improve their extracurricular activities at home, conducting workshops to emphasize the importance of participatory activities and social engagements, which surely I can recommend as being beneficial to their mental health and development. My dear friends, uh, that is what Sri Lanka is hoping to do. And we certainly will place a premium as we've always done in Sri Lanka. Education is a premium. If we, irrespective of whatever we do, education takes primary of place and we are committed to improving our skills in the times to come. Thank you. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. In fact, one of the things I got from you, um, which holds dear to my heart too as well is um, in arts and arts education. Uh, for us at One Million Teachers, uh, we also see the opportunity for arts and we believe that with, when you integrate arts into um, education and into the curricula, you get more uh, young people who stay longer in school and are more um, effective in their education. So thank you so much for that information. And we're really happy to see Sri Lanka's commitment to teaching STEM and TVET programs and we believe that 
these programs and initiatives will obviously only improve the youth with the necessary skills and tools that they need so that they can be competitive, not just only in Sri Lanka, but also globally. So thank you, sir.